today we celebrate more than a century of service and another inspiring year as your Cleveland Foundation continues to play an essential role in advancing our community. You know, our community stands strong today in large part because the Cleveland Foundation has been there to support all of our cherished institutions, both large, medium, and small, and to champion the important issues of each era in our history. Just in the last year, the foundation and its donors invested more than $93.6 million to make our community a better, safer, and more vibrant place for all of our residents. The theme of this year's meeting, Building Common Ground, reflects the spirit of collaboration that can transform every aspect of Greater Cleveland, from schools and neighborhoods to industries and the environment. All around, I've seen what can happen when we come together on common ground. A great education is something we all want for our kids and our community. What is the foundation doing to help teachers and students do their job better? The foundation and our partners have helped to start 14 new and highly innovative high schools in Cleveland. That's a lot of high schools. And they're all specialty schools and they're all very high performing. Uh, as a result of those and other efforts since 2010, the high school graduation rate in Cleveland has risen from 52% to 69%. And it's, it's really on a path to increase much faster in the years to come because all these new schools are in place. There are thousands of jobs out there in Cuyahoga County. Thousands come up every month. But the problem is a lot of folks don't have the skill set to fill those jobs. Uh, what is the foundation doing to improve workforce readiness here in Northeast Ohio? Yeah, it is a huge problem. It's a, it's a travesty that, yeah, we actually have jobs open that can't be filled because people don't have the skills. As part of our educational work, we've helped to establish five new career technical academies in Cleveland Public Schools. And we already have 2,000 students in those five academies. They have 18 different verticals that they can study in terms of possible careers. When it comes to redevelopment in Cleveland, can you give us the state of the foundation's involvement of getting those things done? So, uh, we're proud to chip in the first $8 million towards the Public Square Redevelopment Project. So we now have Cleveland Foundation Centennial Plaza at, at Public Square. Uh, we also put $5 million into the Lake Link Trail which will finally link the national parks to Lake Erie. When it comes to health and safety issues, like health and safety issues in the community, because I know the foundation has been really involved with that and concerned as well, what can we look forward to in the next year? We have a really important pilot going on in Glenville right now on lead paint abatement. We have another very important pilot going on in Huff now on reducing infant mortality. We have one of the highest infant mortality rates in the nation here. It's just completely unacceptable and unnecessary. We're very proud to have partnered uh, with the Cleveland Indians, uh, where we're housing the Larry Doby Fund, which is a fund that the whole clubhouse of the Cleveland Indians, they all came together and pitched money in to attack youth violence. We are pleased to share breaking news with you and announce a new partnership this evening. This new fund, the Jumpstart Future Fund, will support philanthropic initiatives that unlock the full potential of diverse and ambitious entrepreneurs to economically transform our community. This year, the Cleveland Foundation is proud to present the 2017 Homer C. Wadsworth Award to Phyllis Stephen Harris. Executive Director of the Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender Community Center of Greater Cleveland. The third wave, I mean, we've, we, in, in the book, you identify the first wave as kind of the, the wave that AOL led in a lot of ways or eventually came to the leadership right. post on um, as the, everybody getting connected. And then the second wave as the, the sort of Google and Facebook kind of moments that was, has been characterized by connectivity, but also consumerism and buying stuff and sharing content. Right. What's the third wave? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I should say it's a big opportunity for Cleveland, which, which uh, several people have told me this morning that they're disappointed, frustrated, uh, that you know, Cleveland in some ways missed some of the opportunities in the first wave and the second wave. But 
The third way, which is now just starting to accelerate, uh, is really when the internet takes the next big leap and gets integrated mm -hmm. in seamless and pervasive and sometimes even invisible ways throughout our lives and then really start revolutionizing how we think about healthcare and education and energy and transportation and food and agriculture, pretty fundamental parts of our lives.